get into the lesson for the service tonight. Open our Bibles to uh, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 8. On Wednesday nights, we've been doing a series uh, now. We've started another study about God's principles of service. Oh, hello. There we go. God's principles of service. Again, we covered on the basics, things that... Um, Things that every Christian uh, should know and should be uh, grounded in, those basic things of the Christian life, knowing about salvation, knowing about baptism, knowing about the church and tithing and giving and, and uh, serving God and doing all of those things. Now we've gone into where when you start to begin to serve God or you serve God in any capacity, uh, there are principles that we uh, can live by and, and these can help not only in our work in the church but as, as we uh, live outside of the church and we're a testimony uh, of the Lord and, and you know the Bible says that God be, has begun a work in our lives and we got saved now we're beginning to trying to be more like Christ and less like ourselves amen and that's our goal and so these principles are not just and to remind ourselves these are not just principles that uh, the pastor just comes up with no these are things from God's Word that will help us that make us more like Christ all of these principles that we give that we'll study we can find every one of them in the life of our Savior. Uh, when you study the life of Christ, everything that we teach, all the principles Jesus gave us an example for, but we, I like to use earthly examples as well uh, of churches and other people in the Bible that how we uh, uh, can see how God used them and what they did and how they applied and see that, it's more, uh, that there's more examples that God gives us as well. Jesus is our perfect example, and, uh, but God gives us other examples through Scripture. But Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 8, we're going to read. The Bible says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Tonight we're going to learn about being willing. Last week we learned about being servant-hearted when you serve. Tonight we're going to learn about being willing when you serve. As we serve Christ, God, uh, and, and as we serve in the church, and as we do anything for the Lord, we need to be willing individuals. What is it about... What is it to be being willing? Well, I put on the back of your uh, Bible uh, of the prayer list there. It's a Bible study guide. Uh, what does it mean to be willing? Well, this is a, a one definition that I would give it, the Bible um, that here a, a definition here. A person who enters into any service of his own free will, without solicitation or compulsion. In other words, it's something that you do, something that you do, any kind of service of your own free will that you're not made to do or you're not compelled to do. In other words, it's not me standing up here uh, putting a list down and saying, okay, uh, we need to do this here and uh, how about Brother Dotson go do that and uh, Miss Jessica and your whole roundup group there, you go over there. You know, it's not me organizing, it's when you just come up and this is something, uh, being willing means we do something of our own free will. It's not something that's compelled us to do. We don't do it because we get, we get paid. We don't do it because, uh, uh, you know, some organizations have, uh, there's benefits, all, nothing like that. Being willing is something that you do freely. It's volunteering, basically. It's going the extra mile. Valuable is the Christian to the Lord and to the service of God who not only offers ideas, but is also willing to do them. See, many times uh, we, you know, we all have lots of great ideas, but it's different from just giving an opinion and being willing to jump right in. It's the difference between uh, offering your help and then being made to do something. Kind of like at work, you know, you go to work and you're employed. You're not doing that sometimes willingly because Sometimes I don't want to do my job. <laughs> you know, when I remember working at the hospital, you get up and you're sick and you don't want to have to do your job and you want to go, you want to stay and sleep, amen, but you're paid. And so you know if you don't do it, you don't have a job, so you go and you work. But when you, being willing is doing something without outside influence, so to speak. It's volunteering without any chance of recompense, so to speak. It means you do something without ever maybe getting anything in return. It's one of those things where it's when you volunteer and you know it is because somebody wants to, not because somebody has to, so to speak. Whether it's at home, school, church, 
or sometimes it can be on the job where you know you, you you've been there where maybe on the job you there's other things that maybe are not in your line of work you're you don't technically have to do but you know you sometimes maybe you owe somebody a favor maybe you do it because you love your boss uh, anybody love their boss tonight? And, no, I'm just I love <laughs> Brother West. <laughs> he is his boss. <laughs> I love my boss. Amen. <laughs> you know, and, but there are times when there are some things that you don't necessarily have to do, but you go ahead and do. You may not be paid for it. You may not be given a, you may not be recompensed, so to speak, but you go ahead and you do it anyway. This is what we call being willing. It's somebody that volunteers despite what they may get in return. Somebody that goes the extra mile and above and beyond, as we said Sunday night, above their, or Sunday morning, above their call of duty. It means you sacrifice your own resources, you surrender your own will, and you submit to the Lord's authority. It means you volunteer your, volunteer your help and so much, uh, you volunteer your help till the job is done. Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount that this kind of help when he said, And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Jesus said, Be willing not to just go when somebody says, Hey, let's do this, but you don't only just do that, you go even much further. It's completing not only what is required, but it's looking for every opportunity to serve. It's being willing to serve, but it's also being willing to look for what you can serve. In other words, uh, in, or excuse me, and I'm trying to just get, get the main points here for us because we've got uh, more tonight as well. But it's being willing to serve, and when you're serving, not looking for what you get out of serving. A lot of times in the Christian life and a lot of times even outside of churches, I get phone calls 20 times a day sometimes with people that want something from the church, but they don't want to really give anything to the church. Because our society has somewhat pictured church as a freeload. You know, what can your church give me? They're not interested really in going to church or even doing anything for God. But they want a handout. You can thank your government for that. <laughs> but God, and God is not saying that to get a lot of things that you've got to serve Him. Amen? Salvation's free. But God is saying that in the Christian life, God rewards us for being willing. There is a reward for being willing. We don't do it because of that reward. You may not always see that reward. But being willing means we do it despite the reward. Being willing means that we commit ourselves to helping even if we don't have all the details. It means we step out of our comfort zone to help fulfill a need. It means we volunteer our help sometimes before the needs are even presented. Basically being willing means that you're surrendering yourself to do the will of God. Amen. Because that's what God's will is. God's will is basically you volunteering. Being willing and saying, Lord, I have no idea what you want me to do. But whatever it is, I'm willing. Amen. Being willing sometimes is, can be a lost principle because a lot of times we want to get something out of or we look for what we can get back. But being willing is so much more. It means that even in your service for God, like Job said, whether the Lord bless you or whether the Lord curses you, blessed be the name of the Lord. Job told God, he said, Lord, I'm... <laughs> I may lose everything, but I'm still willing to serve you. And so must our attitudes be that whether maybe not God blesses our lives, boy, God's worth serving. We may die a martyr. We may be persecuted. But are we willing? Because being willing is motivated not by what God has done necessarily or what God is going to do, but it's motivated by the fact that Jesus already gave his life. In other words, a lot of times we're only willing if we know that God will give us something. Say, God, I'll do this if you give me. Or God, I, you know, I, I'll, 
I might serve you if you can promise me that I'm not going to Africa. <laughs> God, I'll do what you want me to do if you can promise me I'll have an air-conditioned home. <laughs> now, I love AC, praise God, especially on a day like today, amen. I went outside, stepped outside, and said, wow, it's hot, went back inside. <laughs> but being willing is not necessarily on saying, God, I'll do if you do, but it's saying is, God, you've already given, so I'm willing to give back. We love him because he first loved us. We don't love him because what he might give to us. We love him because he already gave. That's being willing. How to be willing, a couple things real quick. This isn't part of the lesson, but how to be willing is... Couple things, you always look for opportunities to serve. Galatians 5.13 says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Part of being willing means you always look for an opportunity to serve. You're always looking for a chance to be willing. Next, being willing is to go above that which is expected or required. Like we said, uh, that verse... Uh, in Matthew 5.41, that whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. It's be willing to go above sometimes when necess you may, may not necessarily need to or have to, but you go above what's expected. You go above what's required of you. Next, being willing is Proverbs 3.6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You be, uh, another way to help be willing is to ask God or ask what God's will is and do it. Because you see, sometimes with God's will, it's the ultimate test of being willing because God will take you out of your comfort zone. God will take you and, and not show you sometimes the full plan. God will take you and maybe not necessarily reward us in the way that we want. But being willing to do God, but we are still should be willing to do God's will. Next, realize your skills and talents are for God to use. 1 Corinthians 15.10 But by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Paul here in this verse, and this is my favorite verse, in fact it's my life verse, 1 Corinthians 15.10. Paul says how that by God's grace he, is who he, he was who he was. What he did and who he became... The great Christian that we knew of Paul was not because Paul was a great man, but because God's grace was great in him. And because of his grace, Paul said, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. In other words, Paul was trying to let us know that our skills and our talents that God gives us, the fact that we have them is because God gave them to us. And then the fact that we can use them is because God's given us grace to use them for Him. What a privilege and an opportunity it is to serve a living God. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. It's a privilege to get a chance to serve and come to church, get a chance to sit and hear the Word of God, for me to get a chance to preach the Word of God. It's a privilege because it was only by God's grace that you and I are here. It's by God's grace we have a church. It's by God's grace that we have a Bible. It's by God's grace that we have salvation. And so because of that, it compels us to be willing. Next, mean what you say when you volunteer. Matthew 12, 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Those are things to help uh, on how to be willing. So when, in other words, on that last point, when mean what you say. In other words, don't say something that you're going to do and, and never follow through. You know, being willing means that you not only just talk, but... We walk, you know. A lot of times we, uh, we tend to volunteer prematurely. <laughs> and nothing wrong with making it up and saying, you know what, I, you know, I, I didn't realize I, I won't be able to follow through with that. That's different. But a lot of Christians in today's churches, we're, we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll volunteer and say, well, well, I'll do that. And then we never follow through. Amen. God says if you volunteer anything for God, if you be willing to do anything, you say, God, I'll do it. Then, boy, you better believe that God's going to hold you to it. <laughs> Amen. I'm not talking about just serving in the church and, and telling the pastor. I'm talking about with God Himself. God says don't make a vow if you're not going to keep it. 
God says, don't tell me you're going to do something and not keep it. God will hold you to it. <laughs> Amen. God goes with you everywhere. <laughs> Amen. I'm just here at the church. <laughs> God follows you home. But realize in our service, when we're willing and we volunteer even for the Lord at the house of God or to the man of God, that God takes that serious as well. Amen. So when we do something in a church, whether it's here or whether God moves you to Africa, like I said, and you end up serving a church over there, or you serve a church in another state, God moves you, whatever, wherever you go, when you volunteer, mean what you say, and then follow through with it. That's being willing. Next. We're going to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and then this will be the, uh, the lesson there. Uh, let me give you, I'm sorry, I, just, I need to get back on here. Uh, the next thing under there on the Bible study guide, there is a difference between, between doing something because you have to and doing something because you want to. That's next on the Bible study guide. Before we get here, but we're going to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, verse 1 through 7. We're going to see a Bible example of some that were willing, that were uh, highly, highly commended. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 through 7. These people here, and we're going to read it real quick, but there, this is where we get, this is where a verse comes into play that says there's a difference, as I said, between doing something because you have to and doing something because you want to. It's like I preached Sunday morning about uh, fearing God and keeping His commandments. You can, you, can, you can obey God, but when you don't have the right attitude, then it's not really that you're willing, you're just doing it because, well, I just have to do this. You know, the service that God has should be done with a willing heart. It should be done not because, well, I have to just, you know, I, I have to do this and I have to do that. And that's necessarily being willing sometimes is our attitude in doing something. Next, many will be the first to offer ideas, but not many are the first. Uh, and that's supposed to be to follow through. Sorry, I put the two in the wrong place there. <laughs> Many are the first to offer ideas, but not many are the first to follow through. In other words, many will be the first to say, hey, let's do this. And then we, when you get together and say, all right, here we go, we're going to do it. You never see it. You ever had those people at work? Hey, let's do this. And you say, all right. And they show up 10 minutes late. Hey. Or they uh, walk out the next day. <laughs> My, uh, one of the men in the church there uh, in Hutchinson, he manages the Qdoba, and uh, he was, I was... I went, they had a, uh, they had like a vow renewal and we got to go and he was talking to me. He said, yeah, I just had a cook walk out. He went, he, uh, he uh, was offered more money at Panda Express, which was right next to them. And he said, but when the lady that offered it to him didn't ask the high up people if they could, if they could pay him that much. And so they denied it and said, no, we're not going to pay you that. You're crazy. And so he went back to Brother uh, Gray and said, hey, can I have my job back? It didn't follow through. He goes, no, get out of here. <laughs> He's like, you know, you're going to just walk out of me, not give me two weeks notice, and then expect me to just take you back. You know, it was funny. So he wasn't very willing uh, to follow through, Brother Gray said. So that's why he was like, he took the opportunity to say, no, we, we hired you, you know. So be willing, amen. I don't know why he said that, but praise the Lord. Yes, Lord, I don't know. Amen. The Bible example of one who is willing. We're going to hurry up here. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 1, the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. So our Bible example of one who's willing is actually the churches of Macedonia. Paul was writing to the Corinthians here, the churches in Corinth, uh, or the church in Corinth, and he tells them they're the churches of Macedonia. He said, I want, he, said, I, he said, I want you to know about the grace of God bestowed on them. Why? Look there, verse number 2. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God, insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, 
and to prove the, the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there first be a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. So we see here the churches of Macedonia. They were willing in giving to Paul. They were willing uh, also in giving of themselves, Paul says. And they first had a willing mind, as we saw there in verse number 12. And so Paul wanted to commend them and, to com and commend them to the church at Corinth to let them know, hey, you ought to be like these guys. You ought to be like this church. They were a willing church. We're going to notice some things here um, before, and then I'll give you the, uh, the last part of the lesson, then we'll be done. Look there, it says, Moreover, brethren, uh, in verse, or we're going to go to verse 2, How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. The, the uh, churches of Macedonia were not wealthy. And that's what we learned a little bit here. They had deep poverty. That's when you know you're poor. There's not just poverty, it's deep poverty, amen. So that means pretty much what they did is they didn't just live in a hole, they dug the hole and then put the dirt back on top of them. <laughs> I mean, they were in deep poverty is what it says. Why? I'm not sure. I've, I've not done a lot of study on that, whether maybe Macedonia itself, the country may not have been a very wealthy country in the area, uh, but for whatever reason, there was a lot of poverty. But even in their poverty, it says here that the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded under the riches of their liberality. In other words, they gave liberally. This is the only time you can be a liberal, when you give. <laughs> it's what it says. It says that they, they uh, abounded under the riches of their liberality. So they gave Paul liberally. They gave to the, they gave to the work of God liberally, even though there was deep poverty. And it says that it abounded unto riches. Bounded unto the riches. In other words, God rewarded them for being liberal, their liberality in giving, and we'll see what they give first in, in, in giving of themselves, but because they were liberally giving out of a willingness of heart that God blessed them for it. They didn't have much. They were almost maybe uh, probably poorer than you and I, but I like to put myself there. <laughs> Say, Lord, that was me. <laughs> because, you know, we don't always have much. But this church reminds us that if we're willing and we give out of a willing heart, out of a love for God, that God can bless us, even in a great trial of affliction. Some of these people had, it, had a hard time. Maybe they were in the hospital. Maybe they had uh, affliction could be uh, talking about a health problem. It could be maybe family members died. Who, knew, who knows what the great trial of affliction that these churches went through. But even in the midst of poverty and affliction, they gave liberally and God bless them for it. Boy, that's an encouragement. Amen. You may not be going through, you may, or you may not uh, be wealthy, and you may be going through quite a bit, but God still looks down and sees your giving to Him, whether it's yourself, whether it's our money, whether it's our time, and God sees that, and He'll bless that. Now, what made them willing? First, verse 5. This is letter A. They gave themselves to the Lord. They gave themselves to the Lord. Verse number 5, it says, And this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. This is what made them willing. They were willing to give their lives to the Lord first. They surrendered to the will of God. They said, God, we're going to do whatever that you want us to do. The first step into being willing is to give yourself to God. We're never going to be willing to do God's work or to do what God wants us to do until we're willing to do it ourselves. A lot of times we're willing to send everybody else. Hey, send that guy. Who's the one that usually God's trying to call? Kind of like with missionaries, a lot of them you'll hear, they feel a burden. And they think, how come somebody doesn't go to that mission field? And they'll tell you later, God was like, you dummy. Amen. It's like with, you know, I'll even testify here. I thought somebody, I remember as a teenager, think somebody ought to go start church. Somebody ought to go do a church in Wichita. Yeah. I remember that. I'd drive by Wichita, my dad and I would work here all the time. And I'd come through and i think, somebody ought to have a church here. There's a million people. How did I know that God was trying to tell me something? But God begins to work in your heart. Amen. God has a burden that He wants to give you. 
but you've got to be first willing to do it yourself. Say, God, if you wanted me to, I'd do it. Russell Anderson, a man, he's a great man, he's a millionaire, and he gives money, thousands of dollars, to churches all over the world. And a lot of people ask him, Brother Anderson, what's, the, what's your success? How come God made you a millionaire? He said, because God can trust me. He said, I'm not being, I'm not bragging, he said, but I don't just give 10%. He gives over 50-some percent of his income to the Lord. He made God a promise every year he would increase 1% in giving back to the Lord. He gives at least his tithe, but then he gives more. He said, so I told God, if you'll give me more, I'll give more. He said, I told God, if you'll give me, uh, if you'll give me a thousand, I'll give you X. If you'll give me 10,000, I'll give you X. And God blessed him. He said he was a poor Kentucky coal miner, made eight cents a day or something like that. He said, just poor as can be. He said, lived in a, Lived in a one-bedroom house, 12 of them, no, no electricity, no running water. He said, now I'm a millionaire. He said, why? Because I'm a great worker? He said, no, I was dumber than a box of rocks, didn't graduate high school. He said, but I gave to God. And so first we have to be willing to give ourselves. Our, our families, our lives, our churches, and our Christianity will never increase until we're willing to say, God, if you wanted me, I'll do it. Next, look at verse number 5. It says in this, uh, we're going to read the last part of it. It says, they gave the, their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. So not only did they give of themselves to the Lord, but then they gave themselves to, the, to Paul, which was the man of God. They gave themselves to the work of God. So they told, basically said to the Lord, Lord, we'll do whatever you want us to do. And then they found out whatever uh, the man of God who was leading them wanted to do, and they said, we'll do it. We'll help. My encouragement to you is no matter what church that you're a part of, you find out from your pastor, whoever that he may be, whether I'm dead and gone, somebody takes my place, you find out from the pastor what they need, how they need help, and you be willing to do it, and you watch God bless your life. Because God's representative on this earth for us is, again, and not, like, and not that I take the place of God, but a pastor is, uh, is God's angel to the church, and he's God's man. God speaks through his man for the church. He speaks to us through his word, but the pastor also preaches the word of God. And to the church of God, as uh, the pastor is, and the Bible talks about how uh, we have, Christ is the great shepherd and the pastor is the under-shepherd. He follows the leading of Christ. And so if we want to know, God, what do you want me to do? Lord, uh, maybe, Lord, what, can, what, what should our church be doing? We follow the leadership as the pastor is in line with the Lord. Then we follow the pastor, and I promise you, God will bless your life. Now, this can happen where the pastor can get out of line, and then that's where, of course, you follow God's leading in the Word of, the, in the word of God and how to take care of that. But as long as a pastor stays in the Word of God, stays in prayer, and, he fo and he's following Christ, you get behind the man of God and you help the man of God, you give yourself to help, whatever it may be, I promise you God will bless your life. You can always tell people that are not in line with God because they're not in line with the pastor. Not because a pastor's a great man, but if a pastor's following God's word like he should, and a person's in line with the Lord, then guess who they'll be right in line with? The pastor. But you can always tell somebody's heart because you can't get, go to God and say, you know, Lord, I, you, know you, you can't go to the Lord and, and, uh, and, and find out, Lord, you know, how's this person, how's this person, how's this person, and, and, and you know, that kind of a thing. But you can always tell, who should, Lord, who should be my friend? We'll find out how they are with their pastor. Amen. It's a biblical example. They said we were willing to give themselves to the Lord, and as a result of that, they gave themselves to the men of God. And again, not because I'm, I'm a great man, because I know, for, <laughs> I'll be the first to admit, I'm the greatest sinner in the room. But as God gives me the authority to lead the church, we follow in behind that authority, which is God's authority. I promise you, God will bless. Amen. Next, verse number 12. For if there first be a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. They gave what they had. So first they gave themselves to the Lord. Then they gave themselves to help the man of God. 
Then they gave what they had. Look there, it says, If there first be a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. In other words, they didn't look and say, Okay, I'll start giving God if you give me this. They said, God, you want me to tithe now? I'll give what I have, and if you bless me with more, I'll give more. They started with what they had. Too many times, if we're not careful, we begin to say, well, God, I could do more if you would give me what so-and-so had. Well, if I had what they had, I could do that. God doesn't, look at, God doesn't look at what you don't have. God says, give me what you have. Amen. What do we have? Our, ourselves. Our lives. The money that God's given to us. God wants to test you with what He's given to you. Amen. God's already tested them. God's testing them with what they have. God wants to know, are you going to be faithful and a good steward of what God's given to you? And so willingness comes to give what will you have. Pride comes in saying, well, God, if you, if you really would give me more, then maybe I would give more. Willingness doesn't do that. Willingness says, God, I'll give you what I have right now. Next, verse 14. It says, but by an equality. Well, first read verse 13. It says, for I mean not that other men be eased and ye, be, and ye burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. You've got to love the Word of God. God, when He looks at the church, He knows what every one of us have. And God knows what we can give. And God says He commands everyone to give. Why? Because when somebody gives what God gives to them, and this other person may not have as much, but they give what God gives to them, then God blesses that, and that takes care of, and it makes up for each other's wants, the Bible says. It's equality. It's equal. It's not somebody giving more than another. It's, some, it's everybody giving what God's given to them to give. A lot of times we'll get to where we compare. Well, this person gives more, this person tithes more. And God tells the pastor, don't look at people's money and think, Man, I cater to somebody as I preach. Well, because they give more than the person sitting beside them. I don't cater to who, to, to, to according to wealth when I preach. I cater to the Word of God. Because God will bless this church. God just says, you give what you have, and when everybody gives individually, faithfully, then God says that's equal giving. Because God takes the rest and blesses it. Churches, too often times, they have this thing where if the, you know, I know a church in Hutchinson, they won't let you in their parking lot without a certain year of car. I thought, well, guess I can't go to church. Because <laughs> I didn't have that certain year of car. But you know what? They caught their eyes off the Lord that God says, you just give what you have. And they get their eyes on money. Let's not be worried about what everybody else has. No, that letter D is everyone give equally. Everyone give equally. But remember that equal giving is, does not mean an equal amount. It's an equal sacrifice. In other words, you give 10% of what God's given to you. Amen. That's why God calls it the tithe. You give 10% of what God's given to you. And somebody else gives 10% of what God gives to them. And God will bless both. God doesn't compare. Amen. It's equality in giving. Boy, it's a blessing. That's but anyway. So number next or letter next, letter E, uh, verse number two. We're going to go back a little bit and see. It says how that in great trial of affliction, of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded, under the riches of their liberality. Um, and that wasn't the verse I wanted. Let me see here. Uh, oh, verse 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. They put God first. So we're going to go back now a little bit in our verses. But they put God first. And being willing means we have to be willing to put God first in our lives, give Christ the preeminence. In other words, when we have an opportunity to have uh, uh, where we can either tithe or have cable TV, we tithe. So a lot of times we say, well, God, I'm going to have to sacrifice my internet. God says, who's first? These people put God first. They had poverty, great trials of affliction, but they said, we'll cut everything else, but we'll give to God. They put God first in everything. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Next. Then look at verse 1. 
says, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. They realized they could give by God's grace. In other words, they didn't look at giving as just they had to. They didn't look at giving themselves because it was just demanded. They realized what God had done for, th for them by His grace, by sending Christ, and that motivated them to give. That motivated them to give. And then that leads to the last thing. They were also motivated by a love for God. The grace of God and the love of God ought to motivate us to give all that we have. Now, I'm not saying that you drain your bank account and bring it and put it in the church. Amen. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that you ought to be willing to say if God walked down to you right now and said, hey, I want you to give everything you've got. Yes, sir. Now, praise the Lord, we don't have to do that. God doesn't require it. But God may ask you to give one day more than what you want. And being willing is saying, Lord, because of your grace and because of the love of God, I'll give it. A lot of times we, we don't want to step out of that comfort zone because we think, I don't know if I, want, if I can give that, God. I don't know if I want to give that. But what ought to compel us is when we do like these people where they turn around and they looked at an old rugged cross and they said, you know what, how much is too much to give to the Savior? That last point there is, look at verse number 8. It says, I speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others. And to, prof and to prove the sincerity of your love. You know, God wants you to be willing to give because God wants to prove how sincere you are. See, God knows how much you love Him. But you know, like God tested Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Paul, God tests us and He wants to prove how sincere our love is for Him. How sincere is your love for God? Is your love shallow where God, I'll just... I'll give a little bit. Do we have a shallow love or would we uh, be willing to give whatever God asks? Look verse 24. Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. God also wants to prove your love, not just to himself, but he wants to prove your love, prove your love to others. Look here, it says to show, that, show ye to them and before the churches. See, God wants to use you when you give and God proves your sincere love for Him, and then God takes that and puts it in front of others and says, look how much they love me. God puts you as a badge. God puts you as a trophy for Him in front of God and everybody to say, well, look how much they love me by how much they give. And we don't wear it as a badge of honor. We look at it as, well, we just give because I just give. You, ask, you, know, you ask anybody that gives something for the Lord. They'll say, you know, I just I do it because I love God. But then you, you know, it's but the, those are those people that you go, boy, I wish I was, I wish I had that, you know, I wish I had that attitude in giving. You know, God wants to use us to be a testimony, not just to others, but to our family, your children. God wants you to be a testimony to your children one day to say, you know what, I remember mom and dad, they gave everything they had for God. They loved God. Our uh, our family members also outside of our children, our moms, our dads, our brothers, our sisters, our husbands, our wives ought to know that how much we love God because of how much we give. Amen. And again, it's not just money. It's talking about ourselves, our time. How much do you sacrifice for God of yourself? Amen. That's why, you know, it's uh, sometimes I have people tell me, say, wow, it's a a sacrifice. Not anybody here. I, I just talk about it when I've knocked on doors and I tell people, yeah, we have church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. They look at you. You have church when? I tell them, say, well, let me ask you, how much is too much to give for God? I'm sorry you'll have to miss uh, Animal Planet, but I promise you, your 7 o'clock Animal Planet, put it on the DVR and you can watch when you get home. But our mindset in, in America has gotten to where can't, they can't believe how much we give to God. Used to be, if you didn't give to God, they thought you're crazy. Now America looks at it and says, Boy, you give to God that much? Remember my dad, last thing we'll close. My dad, he uh, gave so much to the church one year that the IRS had him audited when he turned in his taxes. And they said, We uh, don't believe that you did that. 
And dad said, all right. So he went down and he didn't keep a, a receipt, you know, of everything. So he went down to the bank and he printed out his entire year's <laughs> bank account because <laughs> he was like, I didn't keep, I didn't keep any of that. He's like, I never thought I'd be audited for that. But he went down and printed the entire year's bank statements. And so he put it on, he went down to Topeka, drove down to Topeka, he told me, and set it on the guy's desk and said, here you go. And they went through it. He said, we got through about three months and the guy had a calculator adding up. Get out of here. The guy had a calculator adding up how much he gave to the church and all the transactions, had all this stuff. He got about through three months and handed it back to him and said, get out of here. <laughs> and he, he said, he asked him, he said, how did you give that much? Here we go. Got him. <laughs> Never saw a pastor kill a fly in a pulpit before, have you? <laughs> Cat-like reflexes right there. The guy looked at my dad and, uh, and said, how did you give that much and live? He said, the grace of God. He said, I don't know how I made it. He said, but God told me to give it and I gave. He gave, I forget, he told me, and uh, he told me not to tell anybody, so I can't tell you. So, But he gave a lot. <laughs> you know, when you give... Boy, people are going to look at you and say, how can you do that and live your life? You say, God. But that's what God wants to do. God wants to use us to prove to the world out there that there's a God who answers prayer. That there's a God who can take care of your needs. This isn't like Allah and Buddha and all these other false religions that you give and God doesn't bless them because they serve a false God. This is a God that's real. And when we are willing to give, boy, God's willing to give that much more. The Bible says He takes it and presses it down. It's running over. It's above and opens the windows of heaven. Gives in, uh, in, a, uh, in Ephesians uh, 5, 22, 23, how that He gives us above and beyond exceedingly abundantly. That's what it is, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Well, God wants to do so much with you. But how much are you willing to give? God's not going to demand it great pastor said one time, God is a perfect gentleman. He'll never come down and demand. He'll ask you. Like Isaiah, God said, who will go? And Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. Amen. Let's, let's be willing. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for the message tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of God's word. Lord, I sure do love you. And Lord, I know that, uh, Lord, I had a lot on my mind. And I'm sorry, Lord, that I, uh, Lord, fumbled a little bit there. And uh, Lord, but I, Lord, I know that, uh, Lord, you spoke to my heart through studying this, and Lord, how that, Lord, I need to be more willing, Lord, to give you so much in my life. Thank you, Lord, for loving me and giving everything that you had, and that, Lord, we can remember how much that Jesus gave for us, and that, Lord, it's nothing for us to give everything for you. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, and thank you for all that you've done. May we be willing to give so much more to you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.